Today's how-to video is going to be on changing your uh, 3.8 radiator. This is a Buick LeSabre, but these radiators is pretty much the same in a lot of these cars with the 3.8. The first thing you need to do before anything buying the radiator, check and see if you got the low coolant sensor. Hits down here on the radiator. This one does not have it. And if you ain't careful and you order one online, you will end up with one that has a low coolant temp sensor hole and us does not so these is not threaded so you can't plug them and that low coolant sensor is a uh, 80 bucks and so you gotta add 80 bucks on just for something you ain't even gonna use but we got a tap and die set here and we're gonna actually tap this and then uh, put a bolt and plug on it with an o-ring and uh pretty well plug it ourselves without spending that extra eighty dollars and having to send this radiator back and be down another week to two weeks waiting for a refund so stay tuned we're going to fix this and we'll be showing you how to install it and all that good stuff once you find the o-wing we got an o-wing kit here we match the o-wing up basically yeah, with the size of the boat that right there, see? See, now that O-ring will hold more pressure than that boat. Now we are running the tap uh, down in it. That way we can make our threads because you don't want to force threads, especially in something so brittle. And then we're going to cut a bolt down to size. And if you need no size of this, what we're using is a 13 by 20. Nope, it's a half, my bad. Half, one half by 20. Yep, one half by 20 is the size we're using. And you wanna make sure your threads go all the way to the end. Us do, should be good. This is just gonna have about 15 pounds of pressure on it, should be, I think that's what the lady cap is rested for. So the O-wing and the thread, Threads on the boat should work out perfect. Okay. So now we just need to measure and get the size of it. Because you don't want to screw it all the way down and damage your core. And you don't want to over tighten this when you do get it fitted. You can actually buy a shorter boat for this. This is what we got. This is Caterpillar boat. We're going to take off, looks about a half inch. Half an inch. Take yep. And that leaves us with about a half inch size boat. So we are now installing a shortened boat. Now you want to make sure not to over tighten this because you can strip plastic it very easy. And an O-wing ain't made to uh, fully tighten up on, you know. That's what an O-wing suffer. That's it. So now we got the plug and everything settled in. You can actually put Loctite on this, on the threads, if you will, paranoid. Now, once you get that, we can go ahead and uh, install the radiator in the car. So we'll be showing you how to do that next. <laughs> so the first thing you want to do when we're moving your radiator is remove your upper brackets. So now we are using the impact. <laughs> 10 millimeter. Uh, you can use a wagger, watch it, and socket. Then you will need to move <coughs> your upper braces right here, support braces. <coughs> Both of them need to come loose. We are using a 10 millimeter <coughs> steel. <coughs> now you need to remove your air down flap right here, and it's usually just clipped on. Or sometimes they just lay on. This one just lays on. No clips. That's very old school. Now, once you get to that section, your radiator hoses will need to come off. And they are factory clamps, depending if yours been changed. Somebody might have the screw-on style clamps. These just use pliers. Now, when you want to drain your coolant, you do got a drain plug. Down below, you can catch everything with a pan if you got a clean pan, you can reuse it. If you don't, you can go ahead and uh, just throw it away. And if you prefer, just put all new coolant in it because coolant does go bad 
ever so many ever so many uh years so what are we taking loose now this is cross member we are taking the cross member out to make it easier to get to i guess i'm just going with the flow and filming folks i'm just filming you know that's my main job ain't it on this one yeah So we let them go ahead and we move the cross member. They two bolts on each side. What size is them, boss? 15. 15 millimeter. So once you get that, you will be left with plenty of room to work with. And you can get to your lines here. Now these clips, it's best to buy these because uh, they do break from the heat of the engine and the age. But you know, boss is confident he can get these out with a pick tool instead of the special tool. So we're just gonna watch him and see but you can buy these and sometimes with new radiators they come with the new blast fittings too that goes into on your upper radiator fans they do plug in but you got what is that an eight bus ten you got a 10 millimeter on each side it looks like it's probably four of them they might be just two we well, know here in just a a few. Two bottom ones that sit in. Uh, there's two on okay. top and one at the bottom. Two up top and one at the bottom. You know, I should be live streaming this guy. Sure. Hey, hey. I would you love. You have to change your airbag sensor right there between the two fans on the radius. We had better Wi Fi up here, we would. Which we don't have Wi-Fi in the shop yet, do we? Not no, yet. not yet. Mm -hmm. The paint booth ain't done yet neither. Are we getting on? You notice, guys? They was mumbling about getting a pan to catch all the antifreeze. That is something you want to do because you want to make sure you take care of the environment. You just don't want that stuff to hit the floor and go everywhere, because you might have to lay in it, and it's just not nice for the environment. And it's disrespectful for the owner. Gonna... Next step, how many bolts did we remove? Three. Three bolts. Can you show them where the bolts was, boss? Just double check. Yeah. Well, I'll show you when I get it out. Okay, he'll show us when he gets it out. Once you get them three bolts out, you can pull up on it. It should come straight out. Might be a little tight fit. Just about at the same time, lean it out and bring it up. There you go. And I'll show you where the plug ins is right now. You got the plug in here and a plug in here. A bolt here. You got another bolt somewhere around here. But I said there was three bolts. I just see two. There's two in the bottom one's clipping in the bottom you radiate. Yeah. Well, there was a bolt right here, too, that held something on. Probably a lower transmission line. So, he is now going to try to remove the plastic clip. I mean, Don, he got them without destroying them. There's a little C clip pushes through and hooks into the top of the line, the hose line in right here. You can see it. Oh, yeah, it is a little C clip. Yeah, you just slide it back. And don't poke yourself in the bottom of the hand. And don't lose it. And that's what it looks like when it gets up. Then you just need to do the bottom one the same way. You can remove the top uh, line now. It just pulls straight out, should. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna wait to get the bottom one out first. Okay, it's gonna wait. It's not that bad little, you know, is it? It's all basically up here. So next step, you need to take your radiator hoses loose, drain your radiator, make sure to catch it. Make sure it's cooled off before you do this now. You got a drain underneath the car. We can take the bottom radiator hose off, let it drain that way. 
and when you do your transmission lines you will need to add a little bit of transmission fluid to your car because you will lose what's in the radiator so keep that in mind too that's why you're watching this video figure stuff like this out Take that bushing out, and I should have a lot of room. Let me have a socket extension. Oh, you need a soft socket extension? Yeah. This ain't no problem to get to. Down this way. I didn't think it that way. way. It might be a pain if you overthink it. Now, there's a 10 millimeter on this side, and there's a 10 millimeter on that side, guys. It is a 10, ain't it? Yeah, and there's a cutout right here on this thing to make it easier to get to. And that's for your condenser. Because it bolts to your radiator. And the condenser is for your AC. Now, if you got shitty AC and it will bolt lines and stuff, then you probably ain't worried about your condenser. But this car's got nice cold AC, and we don't want to damage the condenser. I don't miss nothing. The O ring is the back inside of this piece here. This is tapered, flared fitting. When you push it in there. I believe this thing has to come off. Yeah, it does. It's got to go on the on other this, one. The new one advanced it had to come off. Yeah, it did. They had them in a bag. Yeah, it was. Yeah, the new one at the Vance Auto in the store. The eBay radiator did not come with these fittings, so we had to reuse them. Now, to take your radiator hoses loose, you can take them the easiest. You can, we just took that loose from up here because we got to that easier, that cramp. Because it was facing that way. But uh, you can take it loose from there. And there you want something to catch your coolant. If you ain't take your drain plug loose. You can drain it from your pretty well. Uh, one thing. Now I get back over here guys. And if you can see. We are trying to push up on it. So we can get the bushing. And this bottom line out. better angle for you guys these lines should just pull out just like the top one did that one's a little stuck a little rust in yeah it's probably in a bind or something In that hole, though. I'll take one of the fur and eagle over if you think you can get in there, too. Rusted it. Oh, wing's got it, probably. Can't wait to hold the bottom of that ready It's trying to come. There it is. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Getting kind of worried, boss. Yes. Breaking your parts, no running. That's him. Now, this thing is separate. Yeah, it should just pour up out of it. Just little clips. You got uh, mounts down on Tim. It's in. Little bushings. See how much picks straight up? No, it won't be. Yeah, it looks like it's got to go down. You can push down on You pick her up, raise up your evaporator core and push down on your radiator. And unsnap the snap. Down. Yeah, on that mount over there, Tim. The gooseneck's goes on the other side. Mm-hmm. Probably need to twist it or something. There it goes. Yank it a little bit, Tim. It should go. I don't want to yank on the mouse right now. It's trying to hang right Yeah, right there on the little holder. The Get that little tip back in there. Let 
that screwed up. Needle nose right there, dude. Got a little tip sticking out right there. And push in on that little tip just enough to clear it back. And now you go, guys. Now we need to lay it over beside that other and make sure it's safe. Should be, we just fixed it. Let's turn this one here over. Clip. I take my Dewey Queen cup. This one over. Do the back first. Do the front first. It don't matter. It looks to be sane. Yep. Looks to be sane. Now you can transfer your hoses over to it. And clamps and all that good stuff. You can replace your clamps too if you want to. This little tip right here on this side has got to be pushed in to get it past the bracket. Yeah. You clean it up. Now you can use an impact on these if you can't break them by hand because usually you can't because they just seize on by heat and stuff. And uh, that's what Tim's going to do right now. Go grab his impact. They got a flared fitting. In the bottom. Yep, just like a normal transvine would do. And then these use an O-wing, and I don't see the O-wing. Oh, there's O-ring. It's in it. Yeah, it's a Teflon O-wing, ain't it? Mm hmm Okay. You know, if you broke these, oh, you could actually just flail your end and it put right there, your man. fitting on it like a Lego transmission line. And you do not want to use the impact to tighten these up. Oh, you can put more Teflon tape on it? Mm-hmm. There you go, sir. Put a run of Teflon tape just in case you have it. Drop the Teflon tape, sir. Oh, that's no problem. We got a hundred miles that way right here. Yeah, we'll have a hundred this. We'll keep doing that. Now you want to just snug this up. And you don't want to use an impact on it because uh, it'll bust the radiator. We don't care about this radiator. It's junk anyway. You want to go ahead and tighten it? I'm one-handed. I'm filming this video. When you feel it bottom out, stop. So much easier than fighting. So much easier. Now we're going to go ahead and install this, then we'll pick back up when we're putting it in the car. They just cut out. They just slot there, and one right there, and it just snaps in there. Now, you, this would be a good time to put your clips back in too that you removed. And. You want to put them back in before you put your line down? Yeah. There you go. There's two cutouts. One clips there. And it snaps in just like that. Now when you get done, if you look right down in here, you should see three little tips. There you like. Yep. Yeah. And that shows you. Now, always remember, in case your new radio didn't come with new clips, you need to transfer your clips over. There is a rubber air down piece too. Make sure you get that. We done got it installed back on the car. Some of them just don't have them. Some do, just depends how well took care of the car is. You need to change your radiator cap. This is a new radiator cap. It was bought a while back. A new radiator didn't come with it, but you know, you can purchase one of them $7 if you want to replace it. I recommend always putting a new radiator cap on a new uh, radiator. Because radiator caps can go bad. 
And since your new radiator is new, you might as well put a new cap on it too. Now, pretty much it will go back in the same way it came out. You want to be gentle with it. If you got a friend helping, you can uh, pretty well uh, go under that hole, under that right there first. Uh, get him a help. Just like so. Then you can install your rubber bushings. Yeah, you need to. Now, we got the drop your radiator down to the bottom, turn it to go, raise it, condenser up, hook it into the hook. There's one, now wait till I get the other one, line it. Line went in, this one went in, and went in, both holes should line up. There you go. Now you can put the 10 millimeters back into your condenser. Mm -hmm. Love it. <laughs> Put the rubber on. Uh, I hope you wasn't filming it. <laughs> I was. I think I got that. <laughs> okay. Now, now I want to put the line on. Two bottom transmission line. That quick in. They should snap in. They might not make a super snap. But... Push in on it, guys, and I'll raise it. Push in on the hose. Yeah, push in on it right there. It ain't always. There, that one snapped. That one went in good. I heard it pop. Now we need to check that bottom. Make sure. Let me hold up. See if I can get that I think it's in good, Tim. Wait just a minute. Let's make sure. Ready? Yeah. I think it's in good because it won't come in there. Right? Now, now you can fold your plastic pieces back over the clips. Yeah, it does come in. Finish. Yeah, it keeps them from kicking out on you. Safety. And also make sure that the plastic pieces don't go over them to your things. That means you ain't got it snapped in good because the snap is sticking out and won't run a little bit. Guess what? So next step is go ahead and hook your radiator hoses all up. I moved it so it wasn't running to kick back in. Did I get that bolt out? I forgot it even. Now, what are you Now, let me get the... Is there a new clamp? The old clamp. I would reuse... It's too big, but I think it would work good for that one. Well, your hose is old and it's done compressed. I figured to put the original ones back on it. Look at that. Yeah, well, once you squeeze it, I don't know, Tim. Yeah, that's what I said. I I'm going to replace all that water pump on. Putting a water pump on it? Well, that won't work. Yeah. That's not off of your fingers. No way, they must put another clamp on it. Yeah, that one just gone. Yeah, that was way. Oh, no, it's way still way. activated. No, it's still. It's, it's still hooked. Yeah, it's still hooked, Tim. I thought, overthinking. He actually got it hooked with that special tool. Are they supposed to do that? Yeah, yeah. it's got a fix back there. When you squeeze it, <laughs> see right here, it locks it. Oh, I see that. And then when you get ready to put it back down, you just tap that Should down. Should I go ahead and release no. it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that special tool does. It goes down the... And make sure when you got your hoses hooked up, they are no kinks. You don't want no kinks. And try to put your clamps, if we're using the stock ones, back in the same place. Don't have to unsnap them, Tim. There she went. Mm -hmm. Boom. You hear her catch? Once you get your hoses on, you can go ahead and uh, put your fan back in it. Go drop this right here all the way down, and then slide it under your hose. And then bring the other side in over. That's 
And what you will find about that. Just like so. Plug your uh, fan back in too, guys. Once you get it set in place. Upside down. That's what I thought you done. Because I heard the plug in turned up on. I was like, I don't see the boat, damn it. Don't it happens. Right see, most people Stupid. would edit this out of a video. But... So be careful. Do not turn and put your fan in upside down. Don't be a dumbass like me. Do it right. What a professional do is be in party. Oh, it fits better too. Yeah, it even went in better. See <laughs> There we go. Now you can install oh, your bolts that you removed earlier. I'm showing you how to bleed a 3800 series of, uh, you know, uh, engine. We put a new <laughs> radiator in it, and uh, yeah, we're gonna show you how to do that today. So, hope you enjoy this video and find the inf uh, information good. If so. Drop a like, hit that subscribe button, so let's get started. Well, the first thing you want to do is crack your breeder screw up here. Just like so. That lets the air, give you some air lock. You go ahead and put your mounts and braces and all that stuff back on. Yep, yeah. yeah, we're going to go ahead and throw this back together before we fill it, and then we get right back with you. Boss is using pre-mix in this. You can buy uh, concentrated and mix it yourself. Save a lot of money. Pre-mix is must been on sale or something for Boss to buy it. And make sure you use the right antifreeze with the car. You know, you don't want to mix it. Because I've seen some bad mishaps with mixed antifreeze. And the wrong antifreeze run in the car. So, how much do we feel it, boss? Um, don't he don't know, so. That's about three gallons. He bought three gallons. So, we see if that will do it. We got the breeder screw cracked. So, let us fill it up. Okay, the next gallon he's adding is concentrated. You can mix that. Usually, I mix it 50 50 with distilled water. So, it's one gallon of concentrated, is actually two gallons. And he is getting pretty full. That's why it's gonna hold until he started. Or oh, uh, his breeder screw needs took all the way out because it's so uh, clogged up with quote, you it's know. Coming out. Yes. You don't lose nothing out of the intake out of the motor when you do that. It's just loose stuff in here. Both good? That's good. Put your cap on. Your puke tanks are. We got water coming out of uh Breeder screw, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, top off a uh, reservoir. If you're using pre mix, it's no need to worry about using distilled water, you can just put pre mix in it. You want to go ahead and tighten that back up and put your weighted cap on it and then start it. Yeah, it's a dirty lifter. Definitely kicking. So once everything is good, uh, you want to let the car warm up and check it for leaks while it's warming up and you want to make sure it don't overheat. You want your thermostat to open up so to push air on into your reservoir and through your system. That's what we're uh, waiting on. So we inside, making sure the car don't overheat and uh you know we're gonna check everything once we get it warmed up to operating temperature with the thermostat open 
and then we're going to probably top it off because most likely your system will need topped off at least once so once you get all that and you check for leaks then you might have to bleed it one more time once it's fully cooled off but uh, you shouldn't have to once water came out of that upper bleeder screw you should be fine only thing you should have to do is just top off your reservoir if you can, so we let the thermostat open after we bled it and this is what it's doing right now is bleeding air back into your puke tank as you can see right here so that's one of the reasons I said once everything completely uh, cools down sometimes you have to bleed them one more time to get all the air out of the system but most of the time one bleeding like we showed you is more than enough so we went ahead and double checked that that's what this steam is. We actually let the car cool down and then uh, took the radiator cap off and bled it one more time. The car was completely cool. You want to make sure you, sometimes you have to double bleed them. Now we're going to let everything cool back down and then we're going to top off the reservoir and we should be good to go. Sometimes you can get away with not having to bleed them twice, but you know. So uh, hope you found this uh, video helpful. If you did, be sure to drop the subscribe button. If you have any information to make this easier on anybody, drop it down in the comments section. And, uh, you know, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, show your support. Subscribe, comment, like. See you on the next video. Thank you for watching.